May I stand, O oh Lord, in this holy place. May I worship Thee and behold Thy face. May I be transformed by Thy word and Thy spirit in me. morning. Welcome to Unity's Church. Glad to see all these sunshiny faces on this pre-Thanksgiving Sunday. We're always looking forward to uh, this time of year because I like eating a lot. Okay. And speaking of which, right afterwards we have our annual potluck Thanksgiving dinner, so you want to make sure you stick around for that and uh, load up your plate. Have a good time. Good feast and good fellowship. Uh, and we'll appreciate that. Let's take just a moment right now for those that we know can use some extra prayer, some healing energy, some vibrations sent out into the universe specifically for them. People that you know, friends, family, enemies, uh, co-workers, whatever. Just, if you will, for just a moment, close your eyes, send out that healing energy to them. See them whole, healed, perfect, loving, smiling. trying to contact us. Did you hear that? Somebody was trying to contact us. They were getting that vibration. All right, I'll tell you what. Let's turn to hymn number 312. This will be a fun one. I wasn't familiar with this uh, beforehand. <clears throat> so just follow me and we'll all be lost together. what flowers say then this is my thanksgiving day if I catch the rainbow's kiss if I feel the sunset's bliss if I blend with nature's wave then this is my thanksgiving day if I hear you talk to me, if I see what you can be, if I love you on your way, then this is my Thanksgiving day. Every day is time to give, every day is time to live. Every day is time to say that this is my Thanksgiving day. This is my Thanksgiving day. This is my Thanksgiving day. one that is all 
is perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. I am an individualized expression of God. I am ever one with this perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. And so it is. All right, let me get into the announcements today because we don't want to hold up things uh, too much. Obviously, again, this is a potluck Sunday for Thanksgiving, our annual pre-Thanksgiving uh, potluck dinner, if you will. So stick around afterwards. Make sure you get uh, plenty of turkey. In fact, uh, Peggy and I did one of the turkeys, and uh, I kind of felt bad for him. And I was going to bring him to church, but then I realized he speaks foul language. So I thought, eh. Yeah. Well, actually, him and the dog got into a fight, and the dog kicked the stuffings out of him anyway, so it wouldn't have done any good. But anyway, next Thursday, we'll all sit down at the same time to have Thanksgiving dinner in our own homes at halftime. Okay, all right, all right, I'll get... I gave up the, the Thanksgiving jokes. It's just hard to quit cold turkey. <clears throat> anyway, let me get to uh, uh, some announcements from the book corner. We have a couple of things that have come in that you want to definitely get hold of. One is the Advent book. Uh, there's uh, enough of those in there, only a dollar, but it's packed with just wonderful inspirational stories and guidelines. So uh, stop by the bookstore, get a copy of that. We also have uh, the new 2018 Unity Calendar that's come in. Now, we, all, we have a limited number of these, so stop and get them. But anybody that wants one, if you don't get there in time, uh, let Carolyn know so she can uh, reorder because we have plenty of time to reorder them before the first of the year. So if you want one and there's none available, make sure that you let her know so she can get uh, more order so we can take care of that. We're also going to have a church decorating party December 3rd. Typically what we do is get the tree set up uh, following Thanksgiving. Usually that Friday or Saturday we set it up. And then uh, the following Sunday after that we'll have a, a decorating Sunday where everybody can uh, pitch in afterwards. Uh, and they'll have some munchies if I'm not mistaken. There'll be some, some uh, food, finger food or whatever. Uh, so nobody gets famished and falls out. We don't want that happening, especially if you're up on the ladder 20 feet. There is a sign-up sheet if you want to bring something yeah, over by the book corner. All right. Yeah, take advantage of that. Let everybody know that uh, you're going to be here and you're going to bring a little bit uh, to share so that we can all have uh, fun in doing it. Uh, the Advent Potluck Dinner will be December 15th. Um, again, this is a, a potluck as well. So you'll want to sign up for that uh, and come and enjoy that. There'll be a little bit of a short service, a little bit of singing and uh, fellowship and some fun going on there. December 15th, mark that on your calendar at 6 p.m. So are there any other announcements that I have? Yeah. The, oh, the mastermind insert, yes. Where did I put it? I had it right in front of me. That doggone turkey got hold of it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we have the uh, mastermind group, which means it uh, meets at 9.30 Sunday mornings uh, before the service, so if you want to take advantage of that. Uh, and of those that may not be familiar with the mastermind group, there's a little bit of an explanation on the insert that was uh, in your bulletin today. Mastermind is very powerful, very powerful. The uh, few that I've been involved in, uh, it's a miracle, the things that happen when you get involved in a mastermind group and you follow the, the rules and the principles of it. Every time and any time we apply spiritual principles, spiritual law, it works. Why? Because it's law. It has to work. Okay. That's what we have to remember. We have to get our human consciousness out of the way that always says, eh, it sounds good, but I don't know. Not for me. Other people, yeah, I've seen it happen. But that's the thing you need to get out of the way, and that's what mastermind can help you do. Take advantage of that. Then uh, the Edgar Casey group also meets the uh, second and fourth Sundays after the service at 1145 back in the Children's Church area. So if you want to take advantage of that, uh, and also there's an explanation of what the Edgar Casey group does uh, in the uh, in insert in the bulletin as well. So take a look at those, and if you want to take advantage of them, show up, be present. 
Christmas Eve. Oh yes, I wanted to ask. Uh, we're going to have a little uh, a music uh, part of the show or show the service first. So anybody that would like to sing a song or, or perform a number for us during that time, see me afterwards so that we can schedule you in because uh, we don't want to uh, jam anybody out. We want to make room for everybody that wants to be able to to uh, participate in that. And then from that, we go right into the uh, service and the lesson and the candle lighting service. So uh, that'll be a real treat because Reverend Matthew is going to be here for the evening uh, candlelight service. It starts at 5.30 and uh, we'll take care of our music program first and go right into the service. So, yes. Uh, Sunday morning, don't show up here because you'll find the doors will be locked and, and nobody will be here. We did a survey, uh, the board did, on what people would desire in the way of a Sunday service because it, that Sunday is Christmas Eve, obviously. And so uh, rather than have a service in the morning and people not show up at night or have this service at night and people not show up in the morning, we said let's, let's pick between the two of them and in the evening candlelighting service one out. So that's, that's why we're doing it that way. Okay, any other uh, questions, information? No? All right, in that case, let's get comfortable. Let's get everything off our laps, relax, get ready for some meditation as we sing and pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed temptation but deliver us from done so I invite you to close your eyes or to gaze upon the candles or the flowers as your point of prayerful reflection and to invest ourselves to invest our whole beings in this moment in this time in this place just opening ourselves up to release and let go of all the distractions to being here and now and all the physical senses of sight, sound, taste, touch, smell. We let those go for a moment, become aware of them, and just choose to turn our awareness within. We feel our feelings, we feel our bodies, maybe take a mental inventory from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. Take a deep breath and just affirm that you relax. Let go and let God's good come forth. I relax, I let go, I let God's good come forth. 
we feel our physical bodies relaxing with every breath becoming more calm, quiet, at ease, tuning out all those outer distractions of sight, sound, taste, touch, smell, just allowing ourselves to be here in this moment, becoming aware of those inner distractions of thoughts and feelings, that busyness of the mind, planning for tomorrow, contemplating yesterday, the feelings of excitement and dread, of fear, of joy, all those feelings, all those thoughts active in our minds and hearts. We just allow them to be quiet now, just removing our conscious awareness from them, releasing them, letting go. Once again, affirming to ourselves, I relax, I let go, I let God's good come forth. We relax our bodies, we relax our minds, we relax our hearts. We just allow them to be continuing to operate subconsciously, unconsciously, while we focus our conscious minds on being in this now moment, being aware of that presence, that power of spirit, of light, of love, of God, the life energy that beats within us, that vibrates as us, that moves in and through, that surrounds and enfolds us, this essence of being that we are a part of and that is part of us. We are one. Continuing to breathe deeply, relaxing, letting go of all those outer distractions. Using this affirmation, mantra, centering device, I relax, I let go, I let God's good come forth. Once again, breathing deeply, continuing to relax ever more fully, focusing our minds, our whole being, on that point of awareness where God is, I am, where God is coming into an expression as you, as me, right now. Feeling that vibratory energy, feeling that life flowing through us. Feeling the purity of God, of good, of energy, of spirit. And if our minds or bodies start drawing us away from being in the center, we can use this centering device, this mantra, this affirmation to bring us back to center. I relax, I let go, I let God's good come forth. Once again, breathing deeply, fully, completely, relaxing, wholly. I relax, I let go, I let God's good come forth in the silence of our own being.
relax. I let go. I let God's good come forth. And in this silence, we make direct contact with that infinite, unlimited, eternal existence in God. In the silence, God is there. It's a special place, a secret meeting place. I am there. The essence of God, the I am, exists in that fifth dimensional space beyond time, beyond height and width and depth, in that new dimension, that greater dimension that lifts us beyond all these experiences of lack and limitation, beyond all the, what appears to be missing, to know our unity, our oneness with all that is, and that all we need and all that we desire is readily provided right here, right now. In this love, in this peace, in this joy, in this faith, in God's great good, we do live and move and have our being. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. We take another deep breath and start to come back into awareness of our physical bodies, the room that we're sitting in, the people around us, and feel this attitude of gratitude, this gratefulness for God's great good working in and through and as us. And as we breathe deeply, we begin to become aware of our arms, our legs, our hands, our feet, begin to wiggle our fingers and our toes, and to come back into this space, into this time, grateful for God's great good, working in and through and as us. God is great, and I am great filled. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Take another deep breath and affirm with me three times together. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And all God's children say, Amen. So it is, and so it shall be. Yea, God. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Ladies and gentlemen, Bobby George. <laughs> Not that short, Greg. <laughs> All right, here's one to help welcome us into the holiday spirit and times. Sing if you like. Raindrops on roses, whiskers on kittens, bright copper kettles, warm woolen mittens, brown paper packages tied up with string. These are a few of my favorite things. Girls in white dresses with blue satin sashes, snowflakes that stay on my nose and eyelashes, silver white winters that melt into spring. These are a few of my favorite things. When the dog bites, when the bee stings, when I'm feeling sad, I simply remember my favorite things. And then I don't feel so bad. Cream-colored ponies and crisp apple strudel, doorbells and sleigh bells and schnitzel with noodles, wild geese that fly on the moon on their wings. 
These are a few of my favorite things When the dog bites, when the bee stings When I'm feeling sad I simply remember my favorite things And then I don't feel so bad Well then I don't feel so bad Then I don't feel so Am I turned on? Okay, good. I was. Now I am. Okay. Yeah, well, it was. Uh, it's hard to follow Bob, uh, but uh, I like to play some songs that go along with the uh, with the message. And this one is uh, by uh, Ricky Byers Beckwith. Um, anybody, anybody know who she is? Uh, experienced her. She's uh, Beckwith. The Beckwith part is uh, Michael Beckwith. I knew her when she was Ricky Byers. Now she's Ricky Byers Beckwith, and uh, this, uh, most of us know the, the refrain to this. Hopefully you know the refrain, and you'll sing along to it, but there's an opening, which is pretty good, too, so let me see if I can make do justice to it here. There was a time in my life when I thought I had to do it all by myself. I didn't know the grace of God was sufficient. I didn't know the love of God was at hand. But now I can say if you are discouraged, struggling just to get through another day, you got to let it go, let it all go. And this is what you have to say, I release and I let go, I let the Spirit run my life, my heart is open wide, yes I'm only here for God, no more struggles, no more strife, with my faith I see the light, I am free in the Spirit, yes I'm only here for God, your turn, I release and I let go, I let the Spirit run my life, and my heart is open wide, yes, I'm only here for God, no more struggles, no more strife, with my faith I see the light, I am free in the Spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. I'm going to keep playing until everybody sings. Here we go. I release and I let go. I let the Spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggles, no more strife. With my faith, I see the light. I am free in the Spirit, yes, I'm only here for God. One more time. I release and I let go, I let the Spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide, yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggles, no more strife. With my faith I see the light I am free in the Spirit Yes, I'm only here for God Yes, I'm only here for God Yes, I'm only here for God Okay, that's why I didn't hear it. It wasn't turned on. Okay. <laughs> oh, well. 
You all heard it. That's what counts, right? Ah, I release and I let go. I let the Spirit run my life. How many of you are doing that today? You've been doing that all day, all week? The Spirit is in charge. I have not had one bit of fear, not one bit of worry. I have not doubted. I have not gotten angry. I have not... Oh, wait a minute. I saw some... Your hands went down. What happened? You were all... I thought you were all with me there on that one. Oh, you're human. Oh, no. We haven't all ascended. Uh, that's right. I'm still standing on this platform. I'm not floating above it, you know. Ah, I release and I let go. I let the Spirit run my life. My heart is open wide. That's one of the things I was noticing, uh, you know, the uh, 12 powers, the 12 spiritual faculties that is one of my themes when I come here, the two Sundays I'm here. I have a first Sunday I'm here, I talk about the 12 spiritual faculties. And I, I heard a word used the other day that I hadn't thought of for a while. It was called 12 facets of being. Another way to think of it. You know what a facet is, right? Women are saying, yeah, because you know about diamonds, and diamonds have facets, right? They have the faces. Men are kind of going, I don't know, facets, that's something I've heard before. It's, you know, think of the 12 different facets. Every, you know, on a diamond, every face on that diamond, every facet of that diamond is, is unique and different. If you look at it with a microscope, you know, of course, you're looking at it with bare naked eyes, we don't see the differences, but they're, each one is unique and different. And that's the way these spiritual faculties are within us and elimination renunciation that's the spiritual faculty of november that's the 11th uh spiritual faculty in the 12 powers of man the book by charles fillmore and so when we lay them out in the year we follow that order usually some people move love to the to february because of valentine's day you know Everybody does it differently. That's the, that's the wonderful thing about this is that we want to make it personal to ourselves. And so if somebody, when somebody tells me, well, that's not the way I heard it before, and I say, well, great, you're hearing it differently. You're getting at something new. And that's what this is about. Now, and here I was looking at this, the ability to release, remove, denounce, deny, let go. That's part of it. It's part of it. It's also the power to be open and receptive to the new, because without letting go of the old, we cannot receive the new, correct? Correct, I was just thinking about, you know, how you catch a monkey? You know how you catch a monkey? Well, for, first you take, you take a piece of fruit or a sweet, something like that, and you put it in a jar, just big enough to fit in through the opening. And you leave it out, and the monkey will come along, stick his hand in there, and try to pull it out. But it'll be stuck because it's too big. You know, he can't take it out with his hand wrapped around it. You know, and while it's distracted trying to pull it out, you can walk up to it and throw a net or a cage over it, and you got it. Because it's so caught up in that having to pull that treat out, the way that they know out, you know, the, the only way they can think of is to grab it and pull it out. They, can't, they don't think of lifting it up and pouring it out. Now, maybe they've evolved a little bit now. And, but uh, in the 70s, when I first heard this story, you know, and saw it played out. And it's, it's the same way with us. We know one way to get what we want, right? The person, the place, the job, you know, the bank account, the, the investment, whatever it is, I mean, that's where, that's where my good is coming from. And as long as we're focusing on that good, we can't see the greater good that is there for us. So the power of Renunciation is not only to let go, to release, but is also to be open and receptive to good that is, that is there for us. You know, there's a story that kind of demonstrates how most of us, you know, think about God. And, you know, there was the hiker. I don't know if you've probably heard this story. A hiker's walking along, you know, and he's going up the hill, up the mountain. He's getting above the timber line, and he goes over to the edge to enjoy the view and all of a sudden the ground gives out below him and he's falling and he grabs a hold of a branch and he's hanging on there for dear life and he looks up and there's a sheer cliff up there. There's no way he can climb up and he looks down and there's a sheer cliff going down. There's nothing at the bottom. And he starts yelling, oh God, save me, help me, help me. And then some would say, oh Jesus, help me, whatever. But, and he, start, he hears this voice from above and it says, my son, let go. What? You want me to let go? Yes, son, let go. I will save you. He looks down, he looks up, he says, 
Is there anybody else up there? Right? We're always looking for something, somebody else. And then there's another story, a similar story in the, in the uh, Zen Buddhist tradition of a monk who's walking along essentially the same experience, gets to the edge, falls off, hanging on to this branch, looks down, there's tigers at the, down below him, and there's snakes up on the ledge above, and he's sitting there, and he's looking up, and he's looking down, and he looks at the base of the branch, and he sees this strawberry, and it's the most beautiful red strawberry he's ever seen, and he grabs a hold of the strawberry, and he bites into it. It's the most delicious strawberry he's ever tasted. That's the Zen for you. There's no resolution. <laughs> That's what Zen koans are all about. It's, just, it's up to you to kind of come up with your own experience of what that is. Right? It's about being in this moment, in the now moment, and experiencing the joy and wonder that is ours to experience in this now moment. But if we're not willing to let go of the past, we're hanging on to how it should be, or could be, or would have been, or had, if I would have, could have, should have, if I only had it done a whatever it was I should have been done and doing when I done it didn't done when I didn't done, right? Right? And they talk about how you shouldn't should on yourself all the time. You get should all over your shoes, you know? Anyway, the monk and the strawberry, to be in the moment with what is. To be in the moment with what is. This whole idea of releasing and letting go, this power of renunciation, of elimination, the spiritual faculty, one of those parts of us that the Christ is experiencing. It's that ability to let go. Now, we do it the 11th month, and uh, because it's the 11th chapter, of the, actually, it's the 12th chapter. The first chapter is an introduction. It's the 11th power that Charles talks about in his book, and it's in that order, you know, and, and uh, how many of you know that there are colors associated with the spiritual faculties? Um, there was a woman by the name of Marion Brown. She was the uh, youth ed director at Unity Village uh, back in uh, Missouri there, Unity, Unity Village, Missouri. She was the, uh, at the chapel. She was the youth ed director back in the late 50s and early 60s. And, of course, Charles Thoma wrote his book in 1928, but this was 30-some years later. She's teaching the children, and she wants to come up with a program of teaching the children about the 12 powers. So she, she assigns colors to each one of the powers. You know, and now we assume, and I've had people, I, you know, because I don't use those particular colors. I couldn't tell you what they were right offhand because I don't use them. I have my own system of working with them that I worked with long before I knew there was colors assigned to them. That was, you know, I became aware of uh, the 12 powers back in 1980 when I started attending a Unity Church and attending in, you know, the first book I ever, Unity book I ever Red was uh, 12 Powers of Man, and I loved it. It just kind of like, whoa, it just started making some sense to me about things. And it's, the colors are not in here, by the way. So, you know, that doesn't mean that, they're, that that's something wrong. It's good to have all the different, because it's a, it's a visual aid. Now, to me, elimination is orange. Orange is a universal color for that energy of release and letting go. So that's a whole different story. And so when I do a 12-power meditation, I don't do them in the order that Charles does. I do them in the energy order, starting at the base of my spine and working up. I studied Kundalini Yoga for about 50 years now. I'm not quite that long, I guess 45. And uh, you know, long before I found unity, I was working with energy. And I see these as an energy vibration, and they, you start with the red and orange and yellow and green and blue and on them to the purple and violet and, and lilac. And so I see that coming up our spine, and I'm using that particular, uh, you know, when I do my 12 power meditation. And uh, hopefully we'll get the chance to experience that on Christmas Eve. That's my plan uh, right now. That might change. I just heard this morning we were doing Christmas Eve and not Christmas morning. So. Um, because I work with, work, work, have worked with energy. Some people are Reiki folks here. Maybe you're, uh, um, what's, uh, oh shoot, there's a whole bunch of them. I can't, the names aren't coming to me right offhand. You know, pardon? Reiki, I mentioned Reiki. Um, there's many different healing, you know, just healing hands, that whole idea of energy healing, of sharing energy with each other. And that's what we are. We are just energy slowed down enough to be seen. 
right? You know, light e equals mc squared, energy equals mass times the speed of light squared, mass being this physical stuff is equated to energy. Energy does not, is not physical, necessarily. But we see it slowed down enough that we, it slowed down, we slow down that light energy enough that we're able to see it. And that's what we call the physical stuff. It's all light energy. And so working with energy within ourselves, with others. We had uh, um, a donkey once upon a time. We called her Mama Donkey. I used to live, we used to work, when we were out in Oregon, my wife and I, Kathy and I, were, uh, had a farm for about 10 years, lived on a farm with some other people, and they had this donkey, Mama Donkey. She was old. She was, she was one of those, I forget the kind of a donkey they are, but they have the cross on the back. I don't know if you've seen those. Supposedly they got that from, from uh, the uh, Christmas Eve story when you know, that she, Mary rode on a donkey. And she was one of those, and it's like she, she was our alarm clock in the morning. The sun would come up, and she'd go, hee-haw, hee-haw, you know, and doing all that fun stuff. But uh, there's the, the story, uh, it, remind, it reminds me of the story that I heard once before, because donkeys, they're pretty smart. They're actually pretty intelligent creatures, mules, donkeys. And there's the story of the, of the farmer who had a donkey, and the donkey went missing, and so one day he realized that it had fallen into the well. And the well was dried up, hadn't been used in years, and he thought, well, he'll, he'll kill two birds with one, one stone, and he'll just fill in the, the, uh, the uh, well and bury the donkey. And so he had some friends come and help him, and they started shoveling, and after a while he looks down into the well, and amazes, he's amazed by what he sees. Every time a shovel of dirt is thrown into the well, the donkey shakes it off, steps up, right? Every, every sh shovel of dirt is just getting him closer and closer, to, and eventually he walks out of the well. You know, I thought of that because we buried Mama Donkey one time. We dug a big hole, and, and that, that story of the donkey in the well comes to me. We, what do we do when we get dirt thrown on us? We complain, right? Oh, somebody's throwing dirt on me. Oh, poor me. Oh, oh, oh poor. You know, we're, we whine and complain and moan and groan, and we allow that dirt, dirt to bury us. But if we just shake it off, we can rise above it. Just because somebody shows, throws dirt on us doesn't mean we'd have to be dirty. Right? We can step above it. We can rise above it. There's uh, one of my favorite passages. It's right at the beginning out of uh, the teachings of Jesus. Right out of the box. First, he's preceded by John the Baptist. You remember John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin, born six months before he was. <clears throat> People don't always realize that. But John the Baptist comes and he's teaching, and he says, um, he says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And this is, this, I bring that up that John the Baptist was saying this. John the Baptist was the last of the Old Testament prophets, if you will. That's how we look at him. Still calling for the kingdom, calling for the Messiah. And then Jesus, a little later, in chapter 4 of Matthew, that was chapter 3, he comes, and he's gone through his trials, he's gone through his baptism. He's gone through his baptism, and he's speaking out, and he says, from that time Jesus began to preach, saying, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He picks up the message. He's a transitional character, if you will. He picks up the message of John. And brings us into a new awareness. And, what is, where, and when he leaves, what happens? He says, I will give you a comforter, the Holy Spirit. And Myrtle Fillmore, co-founder of Unity, actually she's the founder, but let's not get into specifics here. Myrtle Fillmore talks about the Holy Spirit as that whole spirit of God, that whole living spirit of God within each one of us. That's the Holy Spirit. The whole spirit of God within each one of us. When I was uh, a young person growing up in the Episcopal Church, I remember one time we had this bishop come, and we knew it was a big deal because you know, they were making such a big fuss about it, and he was speaking. And the one thing I remember about 
what he said. He said Jesus was all of God that God could put in the form of man. That Jesus was all of God that God could put in the form of man. And that kind of made sense to me. I, you know, I kind of hung on to that. And then I found unity and came back into Christianity after going off into you know, Zen Buddhism. Somebody was reminding me, this young guy the other day, on, he's uh, a friend of my son's. He's got to be, what, 19, 20? And uh, he, was, uh, he was promoting this video of Alan Watts. Anybody remember Alan Watts? He's from UCLA, Berkeley. He was Zen, you know, gave lectures on Zen Buddhism back in the 60s and 70s. And I remember listening to him on the radio when I was in college, you know? And that's what I said to this young man about that. Uh, why did I go off on Zen Buddhism? Because I was uh, talking, what was I talking about? I get off on these things. It's so much fun. Get so much. Well, I was talking about uh, John the Baptist and, and Jesus. And Jesus' message, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, a lot of people, you know, have been beat over by the, by, over the head with this statement many times. Anybody be, been beat over on the head on this statement? You know, I have. Growing up, I had. But we don't, that's because people don't understand what that means. To repent. Now, that's the English version. Re, what does re mean? To do it again. Pent, what's pent? Well, pent comes from pentir, uh, the Latin, from which we also get the French word penser, which brings us to the English pensive. To be pensive is to be thoughtful. And pentir literally means to, it literally means to think again. But that's in the English taken from uh, the Latin. But the Latin was taken from the Greek. And back in the Greek, the word is metanio. Metanio. Meta, you know, like metaphysics, means above or beyond or behind. That's what stands underneath, etc. That you know, when we talk about metaphysics, we're talking about looking at the study of that which is above or beyond the physical. Metaphysics. Metanio. Nio is a Greek word from where we get nous and which and uh, a few other things, but it essentially means understanding. So, a new understanding that is above or beyond our current level of understanding. So that's what the word repent literally means. To repent, to, re, to, to come into a new understanding, to repent, to think again. Literally means to think again with a new level of understanding. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's within my reach, right here and right now. It's not somewhere in the future. It's not somewhere in the past. It's not somewhere above the clouds. I think we've been above the clouds now. We figured out there's not, you know, people floating around with harps above the clouds, right? I think we, most of us have figured that out. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's within our reach. It's beyond this level of consciousness that we're living in right now. We're living in a consciousness that is limited to these three dimensions of space, right? Depth, width, height, right? And we do have a fourth dimension of consciousness that we all live in. We, we now call the time the fourth dimension, right? Because if I tell you I'm going to meet you at the corner of of 12 and, and Grossbeck, you know where that is on the corner, but if I'm going to be up on the second story of a building, i got to tell you that information too. That's the three dimensions of height, width, and depth. And you'll go there and you'll sit there and you'll wait. You know, you could probably wait two or three days and then I finally show up. Well, I, was going to, I came at the time I had planned on being there. You were early. Well, we hadn't set a time. Have you ever met with somebody, you know, and realized that they were thinking a different? That's a fourth dimension of space and time. And then there's the fifth dimension, which transcends all of that. That we can live and move and have our being in, that God lives and moves and has its being within. And then they, you know, if you postulate with sciences, it goes off into 11, 12, 13, whatever it is that science has postulated that within, anyway, that's whole bunch of theoretical, but we can all conceive of that fifth dimension, that there is a level of space and time beyond space and time. And when we go into meditation, when we go into prayer, we are lifting ourselves above those four dimensions of space and time. But to enter into those, we have to let go, right, don't we? We have to release 
what was in order to experience what could be. Evelyn Underhill, everybody experienced Evelyn Underhill's book on spirituality and, and uh, spiritualism. She's a little more esoteric than a lot of people get into. But she says that all growth represents renunciation as well as achievement. All growth represents renunciation as well as achievement. The trees have to let go of their leaves, right? Creates more soil so that more things can grow. And then the new leaves come out. If the old leaves didn't let go, what would happen? They would get in the way of the new leaves being formed and coming in. We learn more from our failures than our successes. Think about that for a minute. We learn more from our failures than our successes. Why do we beat ourselves up over our failures? They're not failures. Right? It's like Edison. Took 10,000 different experiments to master the light bulb. Somebody once asked him, how does it feel to fail 10,000 times? He said, no, it was just a 10,000 step process to get to success. Our failures are not failures unless we give up. But if we learn from those limited successes, if you will, or those apparent failures, then we will eventually conquer. Charles Fillmore in his book, 12 Powers of Man, there's so much good in here, I'm going to try to keep it down. <clears throat> he talks about thoughts are things. They occupy space in the mental field. Thoughts are things. Thoughts are things. They occupy space in the mental field. And through our feeling nature, we take those thoughts and we empower them with our feelings. When we get emotional about it, then we eventually express it out into manifestation. It's that whole idea of giving, giving thanks in advance. Ever heard that? Give thanks in advance? I never quite understood that one to give thanks in advance because to me all that we need and desire is readily provided. That all that I want, all that truly should be is right now. And so in thanks in advance of what? Well, I, I, I elongated. Sometimes, usually I bring things down into the short, you know, small version. Some, this one is one that I elongated, another one. It's like letting go and letting God. Well, I say relax, let go, and let God's good come forth. You know, I had to had to stretch that out a little bit for my own limited conception so I could really let go and let God. No way. I don't know what God's going to do. You know? He might, I might not do what I want. But if I affirm that God's good is coming forth, I can do that. I can let go and let God's good come forth. And it's the same way with uh, what did I just say? <laughs> Oh, I'm having one of those days. This fourth dimensional of thinking. Fourth dimensional level of thinking. Where did I go? Get back to that page. They, they, Thoughts act in a realm just above and beyond and within the material. They have a one degree more of freedom than matter. Thoughts have a four-dimensional capacity. And again, I said, you know, nowadays we think of time as the fourth dimension. So now we'd be talking about the fifth dimension of capacity. And he goes on to talk about man thinks in the fourth dimension, but his body in its present fleshly consciousness can express in three dimensions only. Hence, we must cleanse our thoughts by denying materiality. Then the flesh will become radiant ether with power to penetrate all so-called material substance. Penetrating ether to lift ourselves above this three-dimensional existence. That so we are limiting ourselves to this three-dimensional experience, thinking, well, if I can't see, taste, touch, or smell it, it doesn't exist. Have you ever heard that, you know? That kind of idea, that Missouri state of mind, you know? the show me state if I can't see it taste it touch it or smell it it doesn't exist well how many of you have dogs you know you ever have a dog whistle you can't hear it but the dog sure can you know and stores now have these um, 
had these um, uh, devices that emit a sound that, you know, of course, teenagers have newer ears than most of us, and they can hear sounds that we can't hear. And so stores, to keep them from loitering around their stores, have these generators of those sounds for the kids. But the kids are getting, getting, uh, getting on to this. You realize they, they now have ringtones that are at a level of sound that most adults cannot hear. So that school, you know, they're answering their phone because they can hear it, but the teacher can't. You know, there, there's no winning this particular. The flesh will become radiant ether with power to penetrate so-called material substance. He's talking about how Jesus was resurrected, went through his process, that his vibrational level was so high that he was able to lift it beyond the material into that, that uh, what he calls uh, the radiant ether. You know, now we talk about uh, dark matter and dark energy. Back in his deck, in Charles's day, we didn't have those phrases of dark matter and dark energy, and so people poo-poo this ether thing, you know. Ooh, he's talking about ether. It's so, that's so, so long ago. Well, it, today you would be talking about dark matter and dark energy, that, it's, that, that, that we can't see it. We can't taste it. We can't touch it. We can't smell it, but it does exist. The ultraviolet and the, uh, what's the other end? The red, uh, infrared. Those are scales that we can't see with our eyes, and yet we're realizing with instruments that we can see them now using instruments. And there, how much do we not, are we not able to experience? Well, According to physicists, it's only about 97% of the, of the universe that we can't see, taste, touch, or smell, but has existence as dark energy or dark matter. So to think that our senses are going to give us all the information we need to know is pretty, uh, pretty much hubris, right? That's a pretty strong ego, thinking that's what it is. So we talked about John the Baptist coming and saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven was at hand. And John represents that, that illumined intellect that realizes that there is something greater. And then we have John, uh, J Jesus coming and using the same message, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Or to think with a new level of, rethink, or think again with a new level of understanding for the kingdom of heaven was within your reach. And he brings us to that, he's that transitional character that's, that wakes us up to that possibility that we have to let go of the old, have to let go of the belief in lack and limitation, have to let go of the belief in pain and suffering and to open ourselves up to a new possibility of the kingdom of heaven being in this now moment that we can live in, home, in heaven. It's a consciousness that we can participate in this now moment. And that leads us to the Holy Spirit that whole spirit of God that we take upon ourselves and realize the truth that we are one with God and one with each other. That's the whole gospel in a 30 seconds. The good news of Jesus coming and teaching. So we have to shake off the dirt. Shake off the dirt. Release that which is limiting our expression. So if you think you're having financial challenges or relationship challenges or health challenges or just living challenges or thinking challenges, to let that go. To realize that that is just a step in the process. That these are not failures, that these are not limits. But they are stepping stones for our new growth. Stepping stones for our new experience. I release and I let go. I let the spirit run my life. My heart is open wide. I am only here for God. Let's do that. I release and I let go. I let the Spirit run my life. And my heart is open wide. Yes, I'm only here for God. No more struggle, no more strife. With my faith I see the light. I am free in the Spirit. Yes, I'm only here for God. Yes, I'm only here for God. Yes, I'm only here for God. 
And so it is, and so it shall be. Amen. Hey, God. Appreciate that. And I can empathize with thoughts disappearing out of your mind when you're trying to find them. Because of all, all the things I've lost in my, in my life, I miss my mind the most. So, if we will, let's take, our, let's take our gifts, our offerings, our tithes into our hands as the ushers come forward. We say together, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give. And all that I receive, receive. and you, so God. it is. Amen. Amen. Bobby George. Hey, hey, sing, oh, hey, 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 sing along if you like. Oh, there's no place like home for the holidays Cause no matter how far away you roam When you pine for the sunshine of a friendly gaze For the holidays you can't beat home sweet home I met a man who lives in Tennessee He was headed for Pennsylvania And some homemade pumpkin pie From Pennsylvania folks are traveling down To Dixie's sunny shore From Atlantic to Pacific Gee, the traffic is terrific Oh, there's no place like home for the holidays Cause no matter how far away you roam When you pine for the sunshine of a friendly gaze For the holidays you can't beat home Sweet home Ooh, yeah. Can't beat home, sweet home It certainly picks up the holiday spirits, kicks us off in a good way. If you'd like to offer a blessing on the uh, offering. All right, let's take a moment to, to abundance and seeing them going forth to do a mighty work through Unity East Church, bringing that awareness of peace, of joy, of unity out into our community. We are one, and we are so grateful. This is the bounty of God. We send it forth with wisdom and with love. Together? This, this is, is the, the bounty of God. God. We send, send it, it forth, forth with, with wisdom, wisdom and wisdom. with love. Hey, God. And so it is. Amen. Amen. Hey, Amen. God. Amen. <clears throat> We're looking around the room. Do we have any first-time visitors? Anybody here at Unity's for the very first time? No? We're all family here? Well, in that case, why don't you lead us in our, right. uh, our uh, Let's rise and join peace hands. song. For our peace song, let me peace on her. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Fun. Ho, 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 ho. All right. Let there be peace on earth and get it begun with me. Let God is peace on earth. A peace that was meant to be With God as creator Family all are we 
let us walk with each other in perfect harmony. Elvis begins with me and this is the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my joyous vow. To take each moment and live each moment in base eternally. Now there is peace on earth, and now there's begun with me. All right, take a moment to. Surround and enfold all our friends and family and loved ones in light and in love as we affirm our prayer protection together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Hey, God, amen. How about a quick Before we uh, go off and I was asked to do a grace before we go off and have our Thanksgiving.